Star Wars 7x7 episode 2340. Today, the first of a two-part conversation with Nick Martorelli, the executive producer of the audiobook for, from a certain point of view, The Empire Strikes Back. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So if you've listened to audiobooks before, then you probably have Nick Martorelli to thank for some of them and in particular for Star Wars audiobooks. He is an executive producer for Penguin Random House Audio. He has worked on hundreds of books overall and dozens of Star Wars books in general. And in this particular case, I'm thrilled to have him back on the show to have a conversation about the Empire Strikes Back short story collection from a certain point of view, which was released to celebrate the 40th anniversary of The Empire Strikes Back earlier this year. Before we get into it, though, just a quick reminder about feedingamerica.org. That's the website I've been talking about for a couple of weeks now that will direct you to agencies in your area that support people in need, food banks and food pantries in specific, and you would be shocked at just how far your dollar can go. If you have the ability to donate even a small amount, any amount would be wonderful for a food bank or food pantry in your area to help with people who are suffering, who are in need, who have food security issues, especially with the pandemic, especially with schools closing down. Whatever you can do, go to feedingamerica.org and thank you so much for considering it. It just remains for me to say the things that I would say at the end of a show, which is thank you so much for joining me for the show as always, and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. And now here is the first half of my conversation with Nick Martorelli, executive producer with Penguin Random House Audio. Nick Martorelli, thank you so much for joining me again on Star Wars 7x7. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing well, Alan. Thanks for having me here. Oh, it's wonderful to have you back. It's been since Star Wars Celebration Chicago last year, actually. Uh, yes, I was looking through. Uh, if that Boy, that feels like such a long time ago, doesn't it? I know. It, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, you know, unfortunately that we didn't get to get together in Anaheim with everything going on. And But, yeah, what strange, challenging times we're living in right now. Yeah. I like what you've done with the studio here, though. It's very nice. You know, <laughs> new, de new decorations and everything. Why, thank you. And I would say likewise to you. <laughs> it's a different kind of situation for, you know, what we've you know what we've been having to do in the circumstances and you know you've still been able to you know do what you do you know despite everything going on yes exactly we had to um back in march of 2020 we had to execute a little pivots to figure out how we were going to continue producing audiobooks and you know it was a it was a while sort of while we figured out what was going to work the best and now that's just sort of what we're embracing as we go along so we are here to talk about one particular audiobook or audio short story collection, if you will, which is the From a Certain Point of View collection for The Empire Strikes Back. And the first thing I want to ask you is, obviously, aside from the source material, this is now the second From a Certain Point of View audiobook that you've done. How would you say the process was different this time around from when you did it for the A New Hope version? Well, one of the things that was different this time around is that because we had already done it for a new hope, we kind of had a uh, kind of had a roadmap on how to approach this one. You know, thinking about how many narrators we would want, what we would want the narrators to do, um, and also, you know, we knew there was going to be an illustrated story in this one that we had omitted the last time around, but this time we had done two audio originals since, and we we're like, you know what? Let's let's give it a shot at this illustrated story. Ah, yes. That's right, we Katie also, Cook's one. Yep. Uh, we also included the opening credits to the to the film. The the opening crawl is in the opening credits of the audiobook. And that was something that I thought about this time around, you know, these these are such celebrations of the film. And so I had the idea to sort of say, well, what if we actually like what if we really embrace it and sort of start that start off the book with the crawl? That it it is a, it is in one sense a very strong retelling of the of um, of Empire, so let's start off with it the way the Empire the way the actual Empire movie starts and go from there. 
Yeah, it is powerful. And then, of course, it gets very silly at the end with Tom Engelberger's version. Of and that it. is a that's a fantastic bookend to to the project. You know, it starts off with with Jonathan Davis doing a real serious narration of it. And then it ends with Mark Thompson sort of riffing on the joking version of that with with Jonathan trying to be serious again. And then Mark just sort of ending on this like this fantastic light note. Yeah, it does have that feel of, you know, almost a, a behind the scenes or, you know, blooper we reel kind of cutting room floor situation. Not that it's, you know, unpolished or anything like that, but just that it was this bonus kind of stinger, if you will. Yeah, exactly. And I think that putting the crawl into the opening credits helps pay off that stinger at the end. So, oh, yeah, I just heard that in the beginning of this book. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so... Does the preparation of an audiobook collection of short stories differ from the preparation that goes into a novel? Obviously, you have you know, multiple readers this time, but sometimes you have audiobooks that have a full cast of readers. So what is the, the preparation like in terms of short story versus a novel? So with a novel, you're generally sort of looking at one narrator, maybe a couple, you know, if there's multiple points of view. But for Star Wars, it's particularly one narrator. And for a short story collection, there is a decision to make at some point about, you know, so is this going to be a single voice reading all the stories or is this going to be multiple full cast with multiple actors reading them all? And I mean, I think this one is this one was pretty obvious to me. It's like, you know, they, these books are celebrations. So these books are opportunities to get lots of people in to play with the characters and play in the world. So right away, we knew that this was not going to be one narrator, that this was going to be a lot of narrators. And so then it becomes, you know, it's it's casting 40 short projects mm. where you read the story and then go, all right, this is a first person male imperial officer. All right, let me make that note. And then the next story is a first person female imperial pilot. All right, let me make that note. And then the third story is the point of view of a wampa. All right, let me make that note. And once the story order was set by Del Rey, then it was time for us to, you know, look at the narrators we had, look at the people we wanted to get involved, and then sort of say, all right, well, if Mark reads this story, then that means that the person after him is going to be Jonathan, and that, you know, and then it was about like fitting all of the pieces, fitting all of the narrators into the pieces, figuring out who was going to read what, so that nobody over, nobody was, went back to back on a story. Ah, yeah to like very specifically try to uh, vary the voices that were in the book from one to the other. So no one was going in a row. Um, and then there are a bunch of stories in this collection that have multiple narrators as well. So like that was another factor when we're looking at them and going, you know what? I think this needs two voices. I think this one needs three and sort of figuring out the best way to tell all of those the best way to tell every individual story. You know, it's it's doing that work that you would do for a book, but just doing it 40 times. <laughs> and you mentioned Mark and you know, obviously he and January Lavoy and Jonathan Davis. Like there are uh, some, you know, very well established Star Wars narrators and they kind of have strong suits for all intents and purposes based on their previous experience. So you talk a little bit about how you're making these casting decisions, but yeah, how do you look at that and say, well, I definitely want to put one of them in this particular situation because I know it's a strong suit of theirs versus looking at them and saying, oh, you know, they haven't done something like X before and I think they would really be good for that. How do you, you know, make those decisions? That decision process is a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of luck. You know, that sense of like, okay, here's a story about Bosk. So, Mark Thompson knocks it out of the park with his with his Bosque voice. So he gets that one. You know, here is another one that is perfect for Jonathan. Here's another one that's perfect for January. And then you start looking at it as like, well, there's a story in between them that can't be Mark and can't be Jonathan, but it still needs to be a guy. So it's like, all right, well, you know, Sean or Dion, let's sort of figure out which one that's going to be. So it's a little bit of everything. We sort of hit the... Um, we hit the obvious ones when we were making the list, sort of the, the tent poles. This one has to be this reader. And then from there, you sort of fill in around the edges and think, well, what if the one before it is this person and, and figure out as it goes? 
Got it. And you mentioned Dion as well. Dion Graham is an experienced narrator already. This is his first Star Wars project. And we also have Sunila Nankani on this one. This is, I believe, her second Star Wars project. And Emily Wu Zeller, who was in the Dr. Afra audio drama, who was Dr. Afra. Like, this is also her second audio drama. So you're bringing in new voices into this experience of Star Wars audiobook narration. How do you you know, make those decisions, you know, what goes into the thought process of, hey, we'd like to bring new voices in that, you know, maybe Star Wars audiobook listeners are not yet familiar with. And, you know, obviously you have a, a stable of narrators that work on other Penguin Random House audiobooks. So what goes into the process of deciding who the new voices are going to be? This is something that I work with Kevin Thompson, our director on, because Star Wars audiobooks have a very sort of specific flavor and feel to it that that uh, the not frankly not every narrator is is the best at so it's the sort of thing it's like you know just because somebody is a very talented narrator doesn't mean that their voice would necessarily feel like it belongs in the star wars galaxy um so someone like sanila who had read uh, lando's luck for us you know uh, i i love bringing her back to sort of like round out the uh, the january sanila emily sort of, um, frankly, female side of the thing. And uh, mm -hmm. the three, I, I think they actually kill uh, Brittany Williams' story about the three droids and the Millennium Falcon. Yes, the Millennium Collective, the three of them. Yeah, that was great. Um, and then um, Emily had just been Dr. Afra as well. So it was like, it, and that was so much fun working with her. And that program was so well received. It sort of felt like a no brainer to make sure that she was involved in it somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to bring to to continue bringing her along in the group, and then we had frankly we had this sort of we 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 hit the moment where we knew we needed another male reader to join the team, and um, we thought about Dion. Kevin has worked with him a lot, and I've worked with him a couple times, and it was this sort of moment where it's like you know what his voice actually gives something different that that uh, that our that our crew of men don't have at the moment. So it's going to be a different sort of texture in through it. And uh, he gives a different sort of feeling to some of the stories, which I think is a, is a nice bit of texture. He's also a, a character from the old uh, Knights of the Old Republic game. Ah, right? okay. So this is also sort of like return, you know, um, him returning to Star Wars in a way, even though it's his first audiobook. Right, exactly. When you mentioned the idea of having to bring in another male voice, I thought for a moment you were going to say, yeah, I guess we can give one to John Hamm. That's fine. <laughs> oh, I mean, fine. You know, he's available. Um, yeah, John Hamm is back as Boba Fett for the second time. Um, yeah. This is only story. his fourth PRH audio credit, apparently, but this is, uh, but two of them obviously are Star Wars related for you. What is that experience like? I mean, is does he come in and go, I get to work with Nick Martorelli. He is a really experienced executive producer of all this PRH audio things. Like I am in awe of Nick Martorelli. Uh, frankly, it's much the other way. He is, ah. a big, it, he is a big Star Wars fan. Uh, a short story is the perfect way to get him involved because he's a big fan and to have him play someone like Boba Fett who kind of has that like, you know, 1940s laconic drawl kind of sound to me that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that John is so good at. Um, it's just a perfect match made in heaven. Yeah. I'm not being facetious by, you know, saying, oh, John should be impressed by you. Like, really, honestly, like you have produced hundreds, if not thousands of these audiobooks at this point. I mean, you know, does this become old hat for you or is it always kind of a, a new experience in some way? Oh, this these are always fun. I mean, these are always so much fun to work on. And and because the, they're always, you know. Every every project explores a different corner of Star Wars, and even the non-Star Wars projects I work on always explore different corners of of, uh, of challenges to thinking about casting or directing or sort of like approach to audio fiction. So it's always such a thrill to work on these. Um, uh, we haven't talked about Sam Witwer yet. Who was, no, yes, who was that's our, right. He was in our Clone Wars anthology audiobook as Darth Maul, and he was another one where it was like. We, well, we got some stories here for, for Sam, if he's interested. 
you know, because uh, I know Sam plays the emperor in some video games and the cartoons. So we're like, we got an emperor story. If Sam's interested, and then as long as he's interested, let's give him a, you know, let's see if we can get him to read a couple more. Mm. So he actually read that Wampa story that I was alluding to earlier. Um, and he's uh, he's fantastic. Like I listened to. I was able to listen to all the recordings for the Clone Wars book, and it was just so much fun to to uh, to sit in on the sessions and, and work with these these voice actors that I had, you know, that I love, whose work whose work I I watch on television, and now they're they're working on. We're all working in the Star Wars project together, and it was so much fun to work with them. Yeah, do you find that there's a, a difference? I I can't say for sure whether I know that you know certain established narrators, if you will, like Mark or January or Jonathan Davis, whether they've done any, say, animation work, for example, any voiceover work in that way. Uh, but obviously, Sam Witwer has. Uh, do you notice like any you know difference in the way that each of these different narrators prepare based on their you know other experience outside of the recording booth for these narration projects well it audiobook narration is a very specific skill you mm -hmm. know it is it is it is voiceover animation but it is voiceover animation and also storytelling and also you're playing all of the characters right and the thing that uh, the thing that we always talk about as well is that animation is going to have a visual component so your voice work is going to be uh, supported by an animator who is making the character make expressions. And in audiobooks, that's just your voice. So it has to be both clearer and more subtle in a way because you can't overpower it. Mm. You know? a, a, a character in animation can shout in a way that an audiobook narrator can't because everything's working together in an animation, whereas an audiobook, a shout might come out of nowhere and overwhelm. Ah, yes. Okay. It's really weird. It's a really like weird kind of balance to find, like to find out what's going to work well in one versus the other and bring actors from one experience into another experience. But this is also, I mean, this is the same sort of transition from a stage actor going on a film or a film actor playing on stage. Right. You know, it's all their instincts are there, their their skills are there, their technique is there. It's just about sort of modulating and calibrating what this audience is going to require. Gotcha. And you touched on this a little bit earlier, and it also I think kind of bears on you know this particular answer that you just had as well about your production process, and in particular about dealing with our current public health situation. Um, how mm -hmm. has your production process changed like how do you actually get your narrators to do their work in the current environment in which we're in so for most of the summer we were working exclusively with narrators who had home studios ah. as you know uh places uh were under various levels of shutdown effects and some of the studios were closing for public health and and safety yes uh we were working with narrators who had home studios and you know the director and the engineer would would start a zoom call and everyone would be on the zoom call and that's how they would work and uh and so the narrator is recording at their home studio but being directed by someone a couple states away ah okay and that's i mean that's actually how we recorded dr afra everyone was in their own home studios and over the course of the fall more and more professional studios have found ways to open safely and follow, you know, public health guidelines about social distancing and uh, cleaning and mask wearing and things like that. So we are starting to open it out and work with studios again as narrators feel comfortable going to them. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the majority of this book was was still recorded in home studios. Star Wars Sunlight so. Film is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.